This is a show about the American entrepreneur, the dreamers, the believers, the achievers. We discover those making a better life for others through a better business. That's what it means to be in Multiviews Good Company. Every now and then you reach a destination that's immediately special. And here at Fort Loudon, Tennessee, our crew finds a trio of Canadians that use reenactments to get kids hooked on history. This is a fun way of educating the public to what went on back then and how things were done. It's a very addicting hobby, and we take it serious. If you want people to understand and to appreciate history, I think you have to reach them when they are young. Kids today, they've been watching Private Ryan and they've been watching Band of Brothers, so they're more into the World War II. It's harder and harder to get the younger kids involved in this. I've always had a passion for local history and history in general, but I wanted to bring history alive in a different way. Jim and his business partner John think that reenactments bring back the excitement that's lost in history books and classrooms. I think the real history are the people that are at a reenactment like this. They represent the real people, and that's the kind of history I think we need to hear more about. Well, my name is Clay Smith, and I am a full-time 18th century gunsmith. Today, I am dressed as Lieutenant John Gray. He was one of the lieutenants that served here at Fort Loudoun. They put poor fools like us out in walking point, and we'd come back and we'd let the rangers know what is up ahead. The people that interact in this have a deep desire to truly share what they feel is important both historically and society-wise with our visiting public. Unfortunately, some of the smaller reenactment attendees were not getting the most out of their experience. Jim and John discovered that there was really nothing for children to do at reenactment events. And so it wasn't really bringing history alive for them. They did a lot of work trying to figure out how do you get kids interested in history? By appealing to an age-old love of toys, Jim thought he could spark a love of history in children, and Fairtime Toys was born. I started looking and I thought there might be, oh, a few toys and games that they would have played, and then I found there was all sorts of them. We just decided to make two or three toys to sell, and then people started to say, well, why aren't you making this, and why aren't you making that, and all of a sudden we were up to where we were making about a hundred different toys. Get in there, get down in there. Fairtime Toys really gives the small kids an activity to be involved in the whole time they're here. The main goal, I think, of Fairtime Toys is to bring history to life for the youth. It's one thing to see something in a museum where you can't really play with it, but we're here with our toy tent. It's hands-on. They actually get to play with the toys and see how they work, and we get to explain a little bit about the history sometimes. So they had to spear fish and spear seals to eat. So this would be a game that would develop the kind of skills needed to do that. If you can't play with the toy, if it's not hands-on, then it's not much fun, and we want it to be fun. I could care less whether they buy the item or not. My enjoyment is when I see them out there playing with it and having fun. You ask us about furniture, we don't know a darn thing, but <laughs> when you ask us about toys, we have gained quite a bit of knowledge. A lot of toys Fairtime sells, you'd never see anywhere else. Nobody does those anymore. As simple as many of these toys look, researching items from hundreds of years ago is no easy feat. Many times, only vague descriptions or illustrations survive. A lot of these toys were made out of wood, which in our time period makes them uh, last a lot longer. But oftentimes, these toys were burnt, maybe used for firewood when they figured, well, this is an old toy, we don't need it anymore. So a lot of times, these original toys are very difficult to find. So we have to look at pictures or artist conceptions and figure out how they worked and how they were made. It's not simply making toys. There is a great deal of research behind them. 
And I've got 120 books to talk about toys and games from the earliest times. In the first five years, I was discovering something new almost every week. But now it's more variations on toys or games that we're discovering. While Jim and Sheila comb through textbooks and museums researching lost relics, John meticulously recreates them in the wood shop on his family's farm. I started woodworking when I was very young. Wood is very forgiving, so you can really develop your own methods, find out what you enjoy, and then go from there. In this shop, we have a lot of different equipment. And what you're going to notice is that we do not make things the old way because it just takes too long. But it's very interesting that many of the methods that we use are old methods to put things together. So it's a combination of the new and the old. One of John's favorite old methods is using a dowel rod for joints. Lightly hammering the rod at both ends causes it to mushroom out and secure in place. Today, that would be made of plastic or something like that, which could break. But you can see with that simple method, which is a very old method, there's no gluing involved or anything like that, but that dowel can no longer come out. What's marvelous about John is that he can look at a picture from a couple hundred years ago and then say, I think I know how that was made. Making an old time doll, for instance, that takes a long time. And, you know, people look at it and they think, gee, you know, that's expensive. But man, they don't understand how many hours of labor that that really did take to make it correctly. You can find them made in, I don't like to use the word China, but I think you get the concept of what I mean. They look good, but they're just, they're not historically correct. Whether it's historical accuracy in the toys they make or through the characters they portray, Jim and John want to bring history to life for kids and adults alike. There's lots to be learned from the past, and I want them to be as excited about history as I am and many of the people that I know. What this toy company is all about is trying to make connections between uh, somebody who is nine years old in the 1700s and somebody who is nine years old in the 2000s. They aren't that much different, and I think that's something we've kind of forgotten. That's it, yeah, that's it. You have people who think, gee, my kid only will play with a computer, you know, and in the meantime, the kid is sitting there totally enchanted with some of these old toys. Most of the things that we sell are to museums and living history sites. However, I don't think I would want to be involved if it was only museums and living history sites, because I like being out and, and meeting people. Well, it was nice to see you, young miss, and hopefully you'll come back again and play with some of our toys. You know, about six years ago, I retired. <laughs> I'm going full tilt again, and I love it, you know. It's just so great to be able to go to talk to the parents, to go to talk to the kids. It's a life you can't beat, you know. As Fairtime Toys brings history to life for children of all ages, we continue to make history on our quest to find the next good company.